These are the plaintiffs, John and Cynthia Cascone. John says they put down a deposit on a boat the defendant was selling, and they told him they would buy the boat if it checked out with their mechanic. Sure enough, their guy found three holes in the hull of the boat. The thing wasn't seaworthy, and they told the plaintiff the deal was off. But now, the louse won't return their money, and they're here suing him for every penny of the $2,440 they're owed. This is the defendant, David Simso. He says he told the plaintiffs the hull had been damaged and repaired and was very open and honest with them. The plaintiffs got cold feet or something and turned around and backed out of the deal and now they want double their deposit returned. <laughs> well, he transported the boat 70 miles for the plaintiffs, took them on a two-hour test ride in the thing and he feels he's entitled to keep the deposit because everyone knows deposits are non-refundable. He's accused of having holes in his story. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $5,000 for boat transport, storage, winterization, and depreciation. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff put a deposit down in a boat, but the mechanic said there were three holes in the hull, and they can't get their money back now. The defendant says he told the plaintiff about the hull, and it was repaired. It's the case of, it's a hull of a thing. Gracias. John Cascone and Cynthia Cascone. What yeah. happened here? You folks were buying the boat of your dreams. Yeah, we thought. Uh, my son notified me of the boat that was for sale on Craigslist. Uh, I was out of town that week, so I couldn't look at it. I asked them to take a look at it because we both felt the price was really good. and uh, It was nuts. low. Yeah, it was very low. Right. So you thought, wow, I got to nab this one. Exactly. Right. So and then, they went and took a preliminary. It was, what kind of boat was it? It's a 300 Sea Ray Sun Dancer, 1994. Okay. And uh, how much were you asking? 16000 Okay. So go on. I took a look at the boat after I returned. My son, I talked to my son after he looked at it, and uh, he said, the boat looks good, except there's a patch on the bow in the front, good-sized patch. Uh, he said, I asked Mr. Simso. He told me it was uh, purely cosmetic. It wasn't structural and uh, just hadn't needed to be sanded out. But he was said, there I, any discussion about whether the boat had been in any accidents or anything like that? No, well, my son asked him. He said, no. He said, this is the only damage on the boat. And now I would show you a picture. You really can't see the rest of the bottom of the boat because of the trailer that it's on. But you can see the patch. Couldn't where someone just hold it up so that I can? I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the type of trailer that it is made it very difficult to see the rest of the bottom of the boat. OK, so you're pointing out this area is here this that shows area? that there's a patch. Yeah. All right, so did you, okay, so what happened? Did you buy the boat? Did you not I, buy the I boat? I went home, discussed with my wife. I asked, I asked Mr. Simso to take me for a ride, if he would take me for a ride, which he and did. And you did that? I did. In fact, you were out how, on the water how long? About two hours. Okay. Maybe, maybe long ride across Candlewood Lake. It was, uh, everything ran well. Everything seemed okay. Uh, when I got home, I discussed with my wife. I said, I'm really interested in the boat. Uh, and uh, I think the price This is, isn't your first boat, is it? No, no, I, this is my, we've been boating 30 years. This is my, probably my fifth boat. Uh, we had a, I had a concern about the patch. I wasn't, I'm not a flat fiberglass guy, I'm not sure how, you know, so we're discussing it and we decided we're gonna offer him a uh, down payment and see if he'll take a post-dated check. In order to what? So that I could examine, have the boat examined. Oh, It'd give okay, me a couple but of days. You, well, you two discussed it amongst yourselves. Did you discuss it with him? No, I approached him the next day. And said what? I asked him if he would be willing to take a deposit and a uh, post Is there a check. bill of sale in this transaction? There we, is. May I see it? We made up the bill of sale after that transaction happened, after we did that. We made that right, transaction. Right, but what was the agreement between you guys? The agreement was $16,000. I offered him his asking price, uh, $1,000 down and $15,000 in a post right, but you're listen to me. Why didn't you just have it inspected by a fiberglass guy before you bought it? I, I was planning on having it done, but it's the whole inspection process is over over thousand dollars. I had a guy who in the yard who's going to paint. But the didn't you do that anyway? No, I couldn't do it on the trailer. It would have to be removed anyway. It had to be removed from the trailer and blocked right. up. So to be did examined. you buy this contingent on that inspection, or you postdated the check because you could go, ha, 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 gotcha, and cancel the check? I'm trying to understand what your theory was. No, I, well, I was trying to, I was trying to buy myself a couple of days to have it looked at. On the schneid? No, I mean... No, I'm, you didn't say to him, I'm going to have it looked at, then I'm going to cancel a check. You didn't say that. No, you said, no. I'm going to post-date a check because, according to you, what did he say? 
because the funds had not cleared. Right. He got his financing. You were less than honest with him about that. Well, so then what happens? You get the boat. That's on 9-10, he gave me the post-dated check, post-dated to 9-18. We did not make any Why? Other... Okay, but hold on. When did he get the boat? Um, 918, 828, 910, what 9-11. After he gave me the post data check, I, I transported the boat to Bird's Eye Landing in Stratford. Sold as is, no warranties, express or implied. So then what happens? I, I did, uh, well, I have pictures of the damage that you can't see on the trailer. Uh, they're not the greatest pictures. They're a little too close, but you'll That's get right. the idea. Yeah. Um, the fiberglass, the fiberglass uh, expert told me this boat's been run aground. There are four holes knocked clear through it, including the hole in front, which he told me was purely cosmetic. He had removed sections of the inside well, of the no, boat. Well, no, you could see. Okay, stop. But a he second. removed. Stop second. a second. You've been boating thirty years. You know that no, there's no such thing as a cosmetic patch. Nobody takes a beautiful boat and then smacks something on it. It's a repair, so you know something happened. So if it looked bad, that's what he was calling cosmetic. Well, the, the fiberglass repairman told me these holes are so severe, right. the engines have to be removed, the gas tanks have to be removed, the boat has to be inverted and patched. It's a disaster. So what, do you have anything from the fiberglass guy? I do. Yeah. All right, so now he contacts you and tells you this, and what do you tell him? This is his card. Sold as is, no warranties, tough for you? No. I, right, you don't. I, I went and got the boat because I had no money and no boat. Well, no, you had a check from him. That check, as far as I was concerned, was no good at that point. Why? I figured he was going to cancel it. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. Then he has another problem, which is called passing bad checks. I didn't know that. Right. I, I would have left the boat with him had I known that. All right, so you go and you get, what, what, what do you do with the check he wrote to you? I wrote void across it, and I mailed it to him. After a few okay. text messages between the two of us, and it wasn't going very well, I How gave... are the, does anybody have the text message? I do. I do. Oh, I love seeing text messages when nobody thinks a judge is going to see them. Your Honor, based the on the... engine and fuel tanks would need to be removed to properly correct the damage. It became clear quickly that the repair cost would most likely exceed the value of the boat. Rather than continue, he asked me to stop at that estimate. What was... Was there discussion about the fiber class repairs? So, uh, I bought that boat from Certified Sales in Menden, Massachusetts, and the boat was hit. And I disclosed all of that information up front that I made the repairs. If I offered, you're the guy who I offered him. for Mr. Cascone to have the boat inspected at its location. He had every opportunity to do that. Show me that. the check where he wrote void. Um, obviously, you guys settled it after this because this one ends with have him contact mine. They can work this out. No reason for us to talk anymore. So the conversation wasn't going anywhere. And I figured it was best to let him or his attorney because he said he had an attorney. I said, great, have your attorney contact my attorney. They can figure it out. Okay. It was a little bit intimidating, a little bit like a bully. So, you know, that day that I did pick up the boat, we both looked at it on the trailer, and the damage was clearly visible, which when we dropped the boat So off, why'd you void the, the, the deal like this? You wrote void on this, right? I wrote void. You know what? He didn't want so to you're take trying the boat. To, here's, where, here's where... No good deed goes unpunished. So there's a deposit for the boat. Yes. And then the guy says, I don't want the boat anymore. You void the additional check. I figured he put a stop payment on it. This is all the money you paid for the boat minus $1,000, correct? Correct. Correct. All right. And then did you ever tell him you'd return the 1000 Never. I, and fact, then you feel that you should be able to keep it because, quote, deposits are non-refundable. And I transported the boat 70 miles. And it's not enough for you to get all the rest of that money back. You feel like you should get not only the thousand, but now you've doubled that. So I paid. Just cause? Like, what's your reason for doubling your lawsuit? So if this boat has holes in the hull, um, and it was sold as is, I mean, God, it's got holes. Can the te can the uh, new owner or this guy get his deposit back? No, I mean, he, that's what he signed up for. He knew what he bought. So it's like going to Vegas. Yeah, almost. I think uh, he should have looked over the boat a little bit more because it's as is. Oh, okay, that's actually a really good point, going inside the courtroom. In the small claims court uh, uh, paperwork, it says if this is a deposit, you check. You can ask for double 
and I checked off. I, think they're about I just threw it out there. Yeah, they, yeah, just threw it out there and <laughs> yeah. see what would stick. I think they're talking about landlord tenant and not. I I, just, I, I had a yeah. feeling maybe that was. All right. So uh, and w now it's you're suing for two thousand four hundred and forty. Where's the other amount of work? Uh, it was three hundred fifty dollars from my hauler to pick the boat up at the ramp, bring it to the yard, block it up, then unblock it, bring it back to the water, and, and then another it ninety dollars for work coverage for Cynthia. What are you talking about? She runs a daycare, and she had to take the day off to be here. And now you've got a counterclaim against him for five thousand dollars, a thousand for transportation, two thousand one hundred and forty for storage, from September to today. Because what? Because you say it's his boat. I say he's. You can't still say both things. You can't say it's his boat and then void this. Non-payment is a different issue, Your Honor. What else are you saying for winterizing the boat? I had to protect the boat. Here's what's happening. People approach things different ways. But the bottom line, the real bottom line, is this is about a $1,000 deposit, where you feel that based on all everything you've gone through, you should be able to keep the deposit. And you feel like you should be consequence free. Now, I truly thought that there had been an agreement between the parties that he was able to get it inspected and that this check and cashing it was contingent upon that. No, ma'am. I realize now, from his own admission, that that wasn't the agreement. He basically said, well, I figured I'd be fine because I postdated the check. <laughs> um, so now it's up to me to see. Normally, that is the status of a deposit. It's just non-refundable. But if I buy a boat and I say to you, listen, I have an inspection period or I can rescind this, and you say, yeah, sure, and then I inspect, and then I say I'm rescinding, then I get my $1,000 back. But that's not what happened here. So the question is, should that $1,000 that was paid as a deposit be repaid to you? And I don't think so. I don't think that's fair. It doesn't feel right because you didn't have an inspection period. You have a bill of sale where you bought something as is. Through the goodness of his heart or the smartness of his lawyer, he decided, I want to wash my hands of this. So um, no, you don't get two times 1,000 because I say so. Well, you just might as well have gone for quadrupling. I don't know why you were so, so uh, chintzy on it. Um, you know, that is not, <laughs> I don't think that's an appropriate resolution of this case with all the money that was spent taking it back and forth. And this is what was supposed to happen. It was supposed to be an as-is sale. Um, if there's an actual misrepresentation, that's different. You're trying to prove to me there was an actual misrepresentation, and the guy who knows the most about it isn't here. Did you say yes, you had an affidavit from your son or no? No, I have an affidavit from the glass man. And I mean, I've, you can feel free to call him. He, he, you could feel free to get an affidavit from him. Um, so the only reason that this money was post dated was because you wanted to have a chance to do what you want to do and put you in the best position you could be in and put him at a detriment. I just want to make um, sure the boat was where, safe. Yeah, yeah, you wanted to take advantage of a good deal. You wanted it right away. You gave him his asking price because you knew this was severely undervalued uh, and uh, kind of didn't work out that way for you. I'm going to let him keep the thousand dollars. You have a counterclaim for five thousand. No, you know it's your boat and you got to pay to do the things that need to be done to a boat. But I am not going to order him to pay the thousand dollars over. Um, I'm not going to do it. Good luck, folks. You're lucky, actually, that you got the other money. Well, a good bit of legalese going on in this case, a contract legalese. So they keep the $1,000. I suppose so. Uh, I, I apparently didn't make my case to the judge that uh, he severely misled us. There was quite a bit of damage to the bone. He assured us that there was none. So, but I guess uh, it is what it is. Well. I think you've learned, I think everybody's learned something in this case. I suppose no so. A, you should have had it inspected, you know, not before right. you gave any money. Okay, sorry about that. Thanks. That's the way the cookie crumbles here. All right. Mr. Simso. Well, you got the boat back. Now what happens to it? I'm going to clean it up and put it back, put it back for on sale. Put it back on sale? That's it. Apparently he felt it might sell fairly quickly. It Hopefully. So we should be okay. Oh, your time is good. Okay. Well, good. Congratulations. Thank good you. Good luck to you. Okay. Hope it sells. Yep. All right, Harvey, what do you think? Okay, two things, Doug. One, um, you can uh, you can get a warranty on this thing, right? I mean, you could ask for a warranty. And two, you can make the sale conditional um, on a mechanic looking at it and signing off. That will do it for this case. Litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom, right now.